Yeah, so I'm a postdoc in the Data Science Institute and the Anthropology Department, and I've been working with Steve Vernke, uh, Professor of Anthropology in the uh, department. Uh, we're both archaeologists working in Peru, and one of the major concerns we have is dealing with the, uh, the backlog of information. So the data that we collect in the field and how do we interpret that at the, the trowel's edge, as they say, as we're in the excavations, then after the fact, and how do we share this information? So a lot of the material we're dealing with is a, a truly embodied interaction with material objects. Archaeology, as the, the study of, of the material traces of past cultures, uh, is something that involves tactile engagement. So our particular uh, work has been drastically changed by the advent of photogrammetry. So for those of you who don't know it, it's the, uh, the capacity to create three-dimensional models, photographically uh, accurate three-dimensional models uh, from uh, individual photographs. So this is a, a small uh, sort of a zoom through a couple of processes. Um, sorry, lost my cord here. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, so that was just a, a little view through an excavation at Mount Chuyakta, uh, one of the, the sites that Steve Vernke works with in, in Southern Peru, that Bobby Bodenheimer and Oli Moldig actually worked with uh, some of that data in a class in 2017 or 2018, I believe, Bobby, um, looking at developing a way to interact with these models for students to take the data and create a, a system. So in that time, since 2017, 2018, we've moved from higher end systems like the HTC Vive, as many of us may have, have experience with, into the Oculus Quest. And this is kind of the, a major shift, the same way that we're moving from uh, doing traditional drawings and photographs of the material in the field into this sort of very uh, easily accessible uh, mobile VR. So as it stands, there are a number of uh, fantastic recreations using photogrammetry, like this uh, particular um, app called uh, Blue Planet VR, which creates these fantastic photogrammetric models of sites. This is Bora Badur, um, the ruins as they are today, but you're alone. You're walking through the, the experience, reading text panels, inter interacting with media. But as, as fantastic as that is, the important, most important element of dealing with archaeological materials is this collaborative element. So an experience is one thing, but we're trying to think through this as more of a tool rather than just an experience of material. So I skip here. Looking at the excavations themselves this is a, a, a photograph from 2010 of our ex work in uh, Huacorada in the north coast of Peru. It seems a very complicated three dimensional or really four dimensional puzzle, layers of occupation overlaid upon each other, creating this, uh, this environment that needs to be teased apart through copious amounts of notes and photographs, drawings. These are the, the, the bread and butter of our, of our work. But how do we go back to that material? And in some ways, uh, I mean, some of you may have been seeing uh, uh, Chalmers' new book, Reality Plus, that's just come out regarding the, the philosophy of virtual reality. And he's treating um, virtual reality as reality, as a different form of reality, but reality nonetheless. And I am arguing in, in some of my work that the, the fact that we're looking at virtual materials within archaeology altogether. We're initially looking at drawings and photographs, written texts about something that doesn't exist anymore. Something this is a destructive process of removing materials in order to, to tease out the, the details of the entire experience of the past. So in this act of embodied interaction with the with materials, taking measurements, this is the, the fundamental component. This gives us a, the, the idea of what's going on in an archaeological context. So if we're going into uh, a sense of embodiment, having a three-dimensional model that you can move through uh, is one that is of enormous importance. Being able to check notes, look back at the information, reconsider that, that, that data. Uh, until we can get into an embodied condition, we had three-dimensional models, we could look on Sketchfab or any of these web-based um, three-dimensional model interfaces, but this allows us to really get into the space itself, take notes, reconsider what's happening at a particular moment in time, and at different scales. As you can see here, I'm moving and changing the shape and size of the model, experiencing it in a completely different way that would be impossible otherwise. Let's skip here. So the most important element of, of the uh, collaborative element uh, I've described in this particular situation is working with each other in these spaces and through these, these avatars. Now, instead of starting from scratch, and that was a major concern when I first started working on this, is getting into unity. Uh, archaeologists are kind of universalists in some ways. We are jack of all trades, but masters of, of none in some ways. We have a bit of chemistry, a bit of biology, a bit of, a bit of math, a bit of statistics. You know, it, it comes together in a very strange way. So learning unity is a, is a, is a major barrier to just getting to the, the actual interpretive element. So 
thankfully, we are able to use uh, an app called Spatial, which some of you may have seen. It's a multi-platform um, uh, situation where you're able to, to use the, upload the data, uh, look at the models, and, and work together in real time uh, across the, the globe. Um, so here we are. I think this is a video as well. Or the next one. So if you're working with the trowel's edge, you're sitting in this in a trench. Here, this is some work in Bolivia from a few years ago. The amount of time you spend sitting, just sitting in the trench, looking at the stratigraphy, thinking about the the layers, that's where the real thinking happens. But you have to move forward. You have to take your notes and move on. If I'm able to come back to it, and while I was writing my dissertation, I was using these models and sitting in them in VR and considering them again in, in a different way, finding that to be an enormously impactful consideration. So here's an example uh, of working through uh, spatial. Two models that were up uploaded. Uh, they're actually two different, on the left and the right, there you see a small separation. Those are excavated two years apart, um, but they're contiguous units describing how one floor associates with another. This is looking through uh, maybe 500 years of, of occupation at the same moment. There's no way I can go back to this material. It has been uh, either excavated through or backfilled. So this is, this is no longer a, an extant place, but it allows me to go back and ask questions about that stratigraphy, moving through it in a way that is absolutely impossible, getting new uh, interpretations. So if we have this kind of uh, information available to our colleagues, they can stand within it. We can talk about it into some, to some degree. We have an example here. Uh, also in dealing with scale. So here is the, the, the church at Machu Yakta. Uh, that Professor Wernke has been working on for a number of years, we're able to stand and discuss the, in, in the minutia of it itself, uh, changing scale, moving through it, et cetera, et cetera. And here's a collaborative session between my colleague Stephen Berquist and Lindy Masser. We were all, uh, Stephen was in um, Chicago, I was in Vanderbilt, and Lindy, I believe, was in Toronto. So we were able to work together at the same moment, describing our plans for excavations in the upcoming season. We could have done this through photographs, but the capacity to uh, really understand the, the minutia of excavations past and present through a model, this is one that was built uh, via photographs taken from a drone. So allowing us to consider in, in the moment. So as we like to say, as a, if a, a, a picture is worth a thousand words, then a model is worth a thousand pictures. So being inside of a, a VR model of that space is, is perhaps ineffable. This is something that immediately uh, describes the situation. So this is the, the app we're using. As I was mentioning, we can start from the ground up, build a Unity model, spend the time and get something that is perhaps standalone, perhaps uh, collaborative, uh, and often very processor heavy. Spatial itself uses, uh, uses um, uh, Unity to, to build their models, but it is a found, foundationally a, uh, a collaborative space. So these are, these are allowing people to come in in VR or by desktop, by mobile, and AR as well to some degree. Um, so this is kind of a, a next step. They've moved from um, collaborative space, kind of a co-working kind of concept, now to more of a, a exhibition and events and unfortunately into the NFT territory, which is very distressing, but, uh, but unusual. I mean, it's, a, it's a, the next direction, um, but I'm not sure how that fits into our, our concept of the metaverse as it's changing week by week. Um, but just an example, here's a, 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 some screenshots from a, a collaborative session that was brought together of, uh, of educators in, it, that I attended last year, late last year. Um, people bringing their presentations to the fore uh, in the same particular space. Uh, an example here, Brian Carter, who works on some architectural history, looking at um, structures in Harlem, in the, the, the Harlem Renaissance, uh, and a, a model of the Cotton Club, just being able to pull it up and show it, and standing around in it. So students are able to put on their headsets. So this is fantastic news that there are 60 uh, Oculus Quest headsets available to Vanderbilt at this point. It would allow everyone in the class to just put on the headset and join in, in, in a particular space. So that's a, that's a fantastic opportunity for, uh, for students themselves, but also for collaboration with colleagues around the world. So here we are again, looking at other excavations and particular models themselves. So if we have a question about the stratigraphy, instead of just describing it in, a, in an email or, or a, a phone call, we're actually able to stand inside of it and make some uh, decisions about what's happening. Um, let's see. Uh, so another, th these open spaces that are kind of uh, allowed us to bring in maps or even text. You can upload a PDF and, and flip through it essentially while you're standing in the unit, making uh, questions about that particular space. So the idea of this being a, a very lightweight, a very uh, user-friendly version of accessing this data allows us to quickly get the information and in, uploading them in very lightweight GLB format files, quickly bringing them to scale, 
organizing them in different ways, and then annotating them, adding information that is stable on the servers themselves. So these can be downloaded again from that particular state, but you have an ongoing uh, working model, essentially, asking questions of particular elements, the planning for the future, and playing with different ideas. Um, it, la last year, actually, in uh, was November, I gave a lecture to uh, uh, the University of Toronto, my, my, uh, my alma mater, um, in VR, on VR. So here you see two screen grabs of me giving a presentation with a model and a, and a, a classroom full of uh, people either joining in, in VR, a number of them, as well as other people on, online, um, and taking them from space to space within this, this particular model, so going to the excavations, talking about it conceptually, and then taking them to the actual location, allowing them to freely ex examine and question the space themselves, instead of having a, a singular uh, concept of a, a particular location. Um, I think I will show you here. Another element that we're dealing with is the idea of dealing with objects. So this is multi-scalar, not, not only the actual space, but a large, smaller objects as well. I think I'll just give you that there. And I think I'll, I'll leave it at that so we have some time for questions. But it is a, an amazing opportunity for us to have a collaborative element. And that is so much a part of what we're doing archaeologically in terms of an interpretive frame.